Hey folks, it's Brad with GTAwesome.com. We're standing outside Hotel Ocho in Toronto for Gamer Camp 2013. It's the fifth anniversary, the fifth birthday of Gamer Camp in Toronto. An excellent opportunity for people involved in the games industry, whether you're a designer, developer, or just a game aficionado to rub shoulders with some of the game development industry's elite. We're going to step inside and get warmed up, and then we're going to get set for a special presentation with Nels Anderson, who is lead designer of Mark of the Ninja, who's got something to say about designing systems and mechanics. A gamer camp goes on for three days. It's November 1st, 2nd, and 3rd. It's also the launch party of Toe Jam, which is a Toronto independent game jam where developers and designers get together and huddle small teams for the next three days to intensely work on actually developing a working game. here with Miriam, Bruno, and Narf. And Narf. And where are you guys from? Montreal. Originally from Montreal, but now living in Toronto. Also Montreal. Also Montreal. Excellent. What brings you to Gamer Camp? Is this your first time here? Yeah, for me, yeah. It's the first time. I'm here because some friends like Narf have uh, his game this weekend. Yeah, I have a, a game that is shown here. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. Fishing game with actual water. Oh, gotcha. That, that's the, the mastermind behind the fishing game with actual water. Gotcha. That, 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 the crazy guy is here. <laughs> that's a crazy innovation that you have with that game. Tell oh. us a little bit about how that came to be. Where did you get the idea to use water as control mechanism? I, at, at first I wanted to use mud to do a fighting game with mud, but then I realized that Fighting games are complicated and mud is messy gotcha. and people go. won't like to play it. Water is less messy. You can just uh, wipe it on your shirt. Gotcha, gotcha. That and the cold beer brought you here this weekend. Uh, of course. <laughs> very reasonable. A very reasonable title so it shouldn't be too hard to grasp. What else are you most looking forward to this weekend aside from Narf's game? <laughs> well, that was mostly it, but otherwise I... Oh, come when, on. <laughs> I mean, the, the talks today were really good, but also, like, so this, this is the Toe Jam Arcade right now, so games from every year of Toe Jam are demoed, and so there's four years there, and there's more games set up upstairs, and one of my games is on one of the stations that's being set up right now. It's uh, called Rain Cross Bow, it's a game I made in 2011 in Toe Jam uh, when I was still living in Montreal, but I went for a weekend at Toe Jam and made this game with one of my friends. So in 48 hours, you develop a complete game from start to finish. Yeah, that's the idea. It comes with a theme at the beginning, and then we jam on it and make anything, and hopefully come with a finished game at the end. Good. So, so years in the in the thinking, and 48 hours in the doing. Exactly. Excellent. That's what it's really all about: getting down to gamer camp, meeting other people who are industry-minded, who maybe have a little bit of uh, experience in the industry, sharing it with the community. I think that's fantastic. You guys, have a great weekend. Thanks very much for chatting with us, and enjoy gamer camp. One of the coolest elements of Gamer Camp this year are the Salon Series group of keynote speeches. These speeches bring together some of the industry's brightest talents, including game developers, designers, art directors, music, and all things in between. It's a great opportunity for industry hopefuls to get direct insight as to what goes into making games. We had the opportunity to catch up with Nels Anderson after his keynote on night one of Gamer Camp at Hotel Ocho. You just gave a presentation on systems I did. and mechanics. Very interesting, great presentation. Congratulations on officially becoming a Canadian citizen. Yes. So for joining the club. Very stoked. You're officially better and, uh, and definitely more popular north of the border now. Yes. <laughs> So uh, tell us a little bit about um, about Mark of the Ninja, which just launched. Sure. I'm sure it's been a very busy summer with PAX and GDC. Ninja, Ninja was definitely the most satisfying thing I've worked on, for sure. The reception was not what we expected at all. It was the kind of thing where it's like, you know, I figure some people like it, some people wouldn't, that'd be fine, right? And hearing tons of people say, it, like, you know, normally I really don't like self games, but I really like this. It's like, oh my god, it's so awesome, because I was maybe able to open, like, a weird little window into why I like that type of game so much. 
and let people who normally wouldn't have that experience get it, and then maybe they'll head off and also check out, like, Dishonored or Hitman or whatever, and maybe go down that path a little bit. That was probably, like, the thing that was the most, like, uh, satisfying, because I was like, yes, you get why I like this weird thing, and now we like it together, and that's great. And all bias aside, obviously, aside from Mark of the Ninja, which of those games do you think really nailed it, did it the, the best way possible, in your opinion? What, the stealth games? Yeah. Uh, I mean, the big one for me is still Thief. Like, just that, like, that old, hardcore-looking glass stuff is... I, maybe it's just because it was so foundational. Like, it was one of those things that I played, you know, when I was, like, high school, I guess? Yeah, like, early high school, and I was just like, oh, this is actually different. Like, capital D, different. Right. Um, but, you know, of course, the thing that, that carries that torch now the most is Dishonored. Like, I love the Dishonored. Um... So yeah, there's lots of good stuff there in all kinds of different little venues. I, I really like what you're talking about, trying to strike the fine balance between making games challenging and difficult, but at the same time not uh, not overdoing it or not sure. alienating a fan yeah. base. Uh, you, you talked a little bit about uh, learned helplessness, yeah. uh, which, I, which I think is a great concept. We <laughs> see so much of, of that in games sort of becoming popularized and trying to cater to... Right. the lowest common denominator, yeah. so to speak. I think I might actually qualify for that <laughs> in most cases, but uh, how do you really, let's say if, if you're in a position where a, a publisher or uh, a company is trying to push you to kind of appeal a little bit more to the broader audience, uh -huh. how would you handle that? Have you been in that situation? Uh, I mean, not personally, just because like working with Microsoft Studios was actually fantastic. Like with Ninja, they just kind of let us do what we wanted to do. Like, you know, they gave us some resources that we would not normally have access to, like a bunch of QA and playtesting and stuff like that. But otherwise, they just kind of like let us make the game we wanted to make, and that was really good. Um, but I think sometimes, like, you can get a little tied up, like, worrying too much about like how easy and accessible your game is like and kind of what i was talking about today was like if you provide people with a way to approach the game however they see fit like that's kind of has a natural appeal to it right like even if the thing that i choose to do is maybe a little bit easier i'm choosing to do it so it's like i'm choosing to do it for reasons that i find it satisfying right um the times when it's problematic is like oh there's only one like there's clearly a very dominant strategy and it's really boring but it's successful, so that's the thing I'll pick to do. And it's like, that's that's gross. But if there's a bunch of things you can choose to do, but some of them happen to be easier than others, it just kind of naturally works out that people like the things they pick, right? Talk to me a little bit about the genesis of Campo Santo. Am I pronouncing that right? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Campo Santo, which is your new studio or the new studio you're working with. Yeah. Tell me a little bit about how that came to be. Um, I mean, it was mostly that, like, I've just known Jake Rodkin and Sean Bannerman for years. And it just happened that, like, back at GDC, you know, they were talking about how, like, they were considering what they wanted to do next. And Ollie, uh, they, they were there, like, Ollie was at that GDC. And so we all just ended up together, like, at the same party. And it was just like, hey, we're thinking of maybe starting our own thing. And I'm like... Okay, we should uh, we should we should talk about this more, and that was basically it. <laughs> it's very cool. It's an interesting point too that I, I think we, if you conceptualize the development process and the workflow of gaming, you know, it's very, it's important to remember that it's not just all based at a computer, based in the testing phase. Yeah. There's a very human element there. It's important to get out and talk to other people in your industry and yeah. meet other people who are like minded and. Hopefully and come, come up with something. to Gamer Camp. That's right. Now, on that note, is this your first time at Gamer Camp? Yeah, this is my first time in Toronto. Yeah. And you got it in before the uh, harsh Canadian winter That's right. set in. That's good. <laughs> um, I'm soft. I live in Vancouver. <laughs> I'm well, also damp. You'll get used to it. We're, we're going to work on you with that one. Who would you say is your biggest influence on the business side of, or the industry side of uh, game development? Um, if there's, like, the group of people we look up to and want to be like, uh, I mean, Supergiant is absolutely that, right? Like, awesome people make tremendously, like, distinct work, and they're all just, like, humble, cool, awesome people that just, like, working together and making things that are sweet. So it's like, if one day we could grow up and be, like, half as awesome as Supergiant, I think we'd be re all really happy. <laughs> and your website is... Uh, my personal website, it's uh, www.above49, like numerals, .ca. 
For the entire weekend, November 1st to 3rd, Gamer Camp 2013 and the Toe Jam Indie Game Festival took over Hotel Ocho. It's the only event of its kind in the greater Toronto area, and we're really looking forward to seeing what kind of innovation comes out of the whole event. Check out gtawesome.com for the full interview, and if you like the channel, subscribe for more updates, reviews, interviews, and game development industry info. Thanks for watching.